What's up, motherfuckers? So today we're going to be going over the Uncle Ben's Tech, or also known as growing mushrooms out of these 90-second brown rice bags, all right? So I learned this from the Rookie Mycologist and 90-Second Mycology. Both of their uh, channel links will be in the description, so make sure to go follow them, check them out. Uh, 90-Second Mycology, that's what this whole channel is about. So if you want more in-depth videos, make sure you go check them out for sure. But let's get straight into this video. So the first thing you're obviously going to need is some Uncle Ben's whole grain of brown rice bags. Or if you see on the table in front of me, also have some Kroger brand whole grain of brown rice bags. You can use Walmart brand, Kroger brand, Uncle Ben's brand. doesn't matter what brand you use. They just have to be whole grain brown rice. You got to make sure it's whole grain brown rice because they come in a whole bunch of different flavors. And none of the other flavors will work. So the next you're going to need is a mask and glove which you see I already have one um the mask is optional but I honestly like the mask because you know it just helps prevent contamination then you're gonna need some paper tape uh, it's known as micropore tape but it's like specifically like it under the name paper tape but what it is it is micropore tape so you're gonna need paper tape or micropore tape it's the same thing then you're gonna need a spore syringe you see I have a spore syringe right here in front of me if you want to know where to get a spore syringe from I can't tell you guys here on YouTube unfortunately but go check my Instagram linked in the description and I can tell you on there so after that you're just going to need 70% isopropyl alcohol uh, a space to work and then your uncle ben's rice bags or your whatever whole grain of brown rice bags so what i like to do to my bags right here as you can see i like to kind of modify them a little bit so what you're going to need to do is put all the brown rice you're going to want to push it all to the very bottom of the bag so what i like to do is as you've seen i cut just the corners off of the bags and you got to make sure you do not break the seal because if you do break that seal uh, to where this uh, the bag will not be sterile anymore, can contamination can get in, and all that. So if you're doing cutting the corner of the bag like I am, you got to be very sure that you just cut only the corners and you don't cut in too far. Because if you do cut in too far, you will break the seal and ruin the bag. So what you're doing is you're just wanting to move. Look, the on the right is a normal bag, on the left is a modified bag. All you're doing is moving all the rice to the bottom of the bag. So you see right here, I'm snipping the corners, but I'm snipping just the very end of the corners, just so I can get the bottom of the bag to flare out and open up like so. See? So, you know, I go ahead and make sure, check the seal around right there, make sure I didn't break the seal at all. Then I flare it out, and then I push all the rice to the bottom. What I like to do is kind of like, as you see I'm doing right now, I push all the rice to the bottom, and then once most of it's there, I flip it over and use what I call the scrape technique. Um, I put it on a flat surface and then scrape all of the rice down to the bottom. You want to get every single grain down to the bottom. Make sure there's no grain at the top. You want all of the brown rice down at the bottom. So I just sped up the rest of the video because it's the same process for every single one of these. You cut the corners, you push all the rice to the bottom, put it on a flat surface, then scrape the rest of the bottom. I'm doing that for every single one of these bags. I cut the tips off the bottom, flare the bottom out, make sure I didn't break the seal, and then scrape all the rice to the bottom. That's what you're going to want to do for every single bag before you even start the whole process. This is basically the first step of the process. You get all the brown rice to the bottom of the bag. So I'm doing exactly that for all of these bags. And this is the last one. You know, I cut it, make sure I didn't break the seal, scrape all the rice to the bottom, all the brown rice is in the bottom. You are good for this first step. So after you do this first step, you're going to want to go ahead and clean off, you know, get all your extras and everything out here. Then what you're going to need is a torch. You can get torches from Walmart, gas stations, all this stuff. And then the torch is used to flame sterilize the needle in between bags. So when you first get your spore syringe, it should come with one needle at least. I would recommend buying a pack of needles on Amazon or something because it's a lot easier um, to have just a whole bunch of needles instead of having to flame sterilize in between. But just in case you guys didn't buy needles and you only have the one needle that the spore syringe came, came with, then I can show you guys what to do. All you'll need to do is a torch and you'll flame sterilize in between. So why, what I'm doing right now is I'm getting my 70% isopropyl alcohol uh, that's in a spray bottle and I'm wiping down my entire work area. So I wipe down, I spray it on my gloves, wipe down my gloves, and then I spray it on the area that I'm going to be working with and go ahead and wipe that down. You want to be as clean as possible and you want to be as sterile as possible. So I recommend getting a whole bunch of 70% isopropyl alcohol. You need 70% isopropyl alcohol. If you use 91%, I think it dries too quick. I just know that you want 70% isopropyl alcohol. So here again, I'm just making sure that all the brown rice is at the bottom of the bag. And then I go ahead and spray all the bags down with 70% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm wiping the front, the back, the bottom. I'm wiping every single bag down. Uh, as you can see in the video, I'm wiping every single bag down, making sure they're all pristine and clean. 
and I will spray the 70% isopropyl alcohol in my hands multiple, multiple times through this entire process just to be super careful and extra safe. I mean, you probably don't have to, but I like to do it because, you know, I kind of have a reputation known as the contamination king, the contam king. So I try to be as clean as possible. So what you're doing now is you're going to grab your sports syringe and grab your needle uh, and you want to shake up your sports syringe really well before use. But sorry, one more thing before we get into that. What you want to go ahead and do is you want to go ahead and get two, get your micro pore tape or your paper tape. It's the same thing, just two different names. Get your paper tape and then you want to rip off two pieces and put it on the top of every bag like so. This will come in handy uh, because right after you inject your spore solution into these bags, you want to immediately cover it with this micro pore tape as soon as possible. So if you already have some on the top of the bag like so, all you got to do is grab it from the top of the bag and then put it over the hole because the quicker you can cover that hole, the better. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be taking my spore syringe and shaking it. Well, I got to, you know, clean my hands down with 70% ice purple alcohol one more time just to be safe, better safe than sorry. Then I'm going to grab my spore syringe and I'm going to shake it up really well. Uh, you want your spore syringe shooken up super, super well. You want all those spores uh, to be, as you see, I'm doing it right now. You want all those spores to be mixed in that solution. I would shake it for around 20 to 30 seconds. Then you want to go ahead and take the cap off and put that needle on just like so. You saw I opened the needle package, but it didn't, didn't take it all the way out yet. That's how you want to put the needle on just to be the most clean. And the needles do come pre-sterilized. They're already clean. So for your first injection, uh, you do not have to flame sterilize it. It is already clean. And you want to make about one milliliter, a little bit less, into each bag. Normally, your sports syringe will come with about 12, 10 to 12 milliliters of solution. You want to put about one milliliter in each bag, any more than that, and it can cause contamination because it is too much water, it's too much too wet inside the bag. So what I'm doing now is I'm flame sterilizing the needle in between uses. Like I said earlier, if you're using a, a needle for more than one bag, you have to flame sterilize. And you can see what I'm doing is once the needle is red hot, that is basically clean. So I like to get the whole needle red hot, almost all the way down to the bottom. And then it is ready to be used again. So then you put it into the next bag and then let it, I would let it cool down for a second in the rice. And then you want to go ahead and inject about another milliliter of solution into the bag. As soon as you pull it out, you want to put that paper tape or micropore tape right over the top of that hole so no contaminants get in. So, like I said earlier, if you have multiple needles, you can just use a new needle for each bag, and that way you don't have to flame sterilize your needles in between each use. But I'm showing you guys just in case you only have one needle, or you don't have a whole bunch of uh, needles, and you have to use the same needle. It is possible. You just have to flame sterilize it in between every use, which you guys are seeing me do now. I'm getting the needle red hot, uh, putting it in the bag, letting it cool down for a second, then injecting my one milliliter of spore solution in. And I did speed up this part of the video just because uh, it is a little bit long. It takes a little bit of time to um, flame sterilize the needle in between each use. But, you know, I flame sterilize the needle, inject it, and then immediately cover it with that micro pore tape. So, um, yeah, I just recommend uh, buying you a pack of needles on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. It cuts out this part of the process where you have to flame sterilize the needle in between. So you look right here. I just threw a new needle on. So for this one right here, I don't have to flame sterilize it. It's so much easier to throw a new needle on every time. It just, I guess, could be a little wasteful. And there, I just threw a new needle on so I didn't have to flame sterilize it. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be putting another thing of tape on the top of all these bags because now we're going to be making the FAE holes, which is also known as fresh air exchange exchange holes without these holes the uh, mycelium um can sometimes stall or go slower because mycelium needs a little bit of fae fresh air exchange to be able to colonize the rice and be able to grow good so for this part uh i also use another needle so that's also why i recommend getting a pack of needles it's like a pack of 100 is like what five or ten dollars on amazon super cheap and they all come pre-sterilized so what you're going to want to do is grab your needle and you want to split the uh bag apart you see how i grabbed the bag the front and back and split it apart then you want to go right through like that go through just the front of the bag and make a hole then immediately cover it with that micro pore tape right where you made that hole what this does is creates a fresh air exchange hole for new air to come in 
and for the mycelium to like it. So in between uses, this is where I recommend only using one needle because in between uses, you can flame sterilize the needle and it makes it a whole lot easier to make that hole. So you see what I'm doing? I'm separating the front and the back of the bag apart, doing it only through the front, making two holes just like that and then covering it with that micropore tape. You gotta make sure that you separate the front and the back of the bag because if you do accidentally make holes in the back of the bag and you don't cover it with the micropore tape, there's a high chance that it will get contaminated. So I'm doing the exact same process for the rest of these bags. I flame sterilize the needle in between, get it glowing red hot, and then I make uh, I put it through the front of the bag, make two holes like so, cover it with the micropore tape. So I'm going to just do that for the rest of the bags. And then once you have completed this process, you have completed uh, part one of the process of growing mushrooms at home. Once these bags are fully colonized in white, they will be ready to what's known as spawn to bulk. And that's when you normally throw them in tubs with some substrate and then you get mushrooms growing from there. So this process, taking the bag to fully from the start date right here to fully colonize will take anywhere from about three to four weeks unless you do the break and shake tech which i will be making another video on soon so stay tuned for that but as you can see right there i made all the fresh ae holes in the bag covered it all with micropore tape and we are good to go now this is three and a half weeks later almost an entire month later and almost every single one of these bags guys is fully colonized i don't see any signs of contamination so far but we won't truly know until we open the bag you can see this bag right here isn't fully colonized that white healthy mycelium hasn't eaten all or hasn't colonized all that ground uh the wow the brown grain brown rice i can't fucking speak i'm sorry but look all these other bags are firm if you squeeze on the sides it kind of feels like a brick in there it's all white on the bottom you don't see any brown rice it's just pure white that's a good sign so once the entire bottom is pure white like that it basically means it's ready to spawn to bulk or ready to do whatever you're going to do with it so now i'm going to go ahead and cut these bags open and show you guys what it looks like on the inside so I'm going to do exactly that. Actually, wait, I don't need to use these scissors. I forgot. You can tear these bags open. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this bag open and look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that white, healthy mycelium. So there is a little bit of uncolonized grain at the top, but that is fine. Uh, but look at that. You don't see any signs of contamination. It's pure white. That's what you want to see. If you see any miscoloration, any green, any brown, any gray, any black, throw it away immediately. That means there is contamination. But just like that, all healthy white. That is good. Here's another bag. Look at that. A little bit of uncolonized grain at the top again. But other than that, super white, super healthy. It smells, it kind of has an earthy smell. You guys will know if it's contaminated. Trust me, it smells rank. It smells sour. It just smells horrible. If it smells bad, throw it away. What you should be seeing is bright white and an earthy smell. And with that, you have the Uncle Ben's Tech completed.